वेलकम टू इंजीनियरी फंड आफ फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एट जीरो फाइव वन वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू एड्रेसिंग मोड्स ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एट जीरो फाइव वन लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यू फर्स्ट वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एड्रेसिंग मोड सी एड्रेसिंग मोड मीन्स वॉट इट इज अ वे ऑफ स्पेसिफाइंग ऑपरेंट्स इन इंस्ट्रक्शन सो वेन यू राइट एनी इंस्ट्रक्शन इन दैट ऑब्वियसली यू विल बी हैविंग ऑपरेंट्स दोज ऑपरेंट्स मे बी डेटा इट मे बी रजिस्टर इट मे बी मेमरी लोकेशन right so how to specify operands that is defined by addressing modes so with 8051 microcontroller we have five addressing modes i'll explain you each and every addressing modes along with examples so that will gives you more clarity let us see all those things step by step so my dear students when we talk about addressing modes then you should know various formats of specifying operands in instruction is referred as addressing mode here when we talk about immediate addressing mode then in immediate addressing mode we specify data in instruction itself that data may be of 1 byte or 2 byte here my dear students when you write data at that time you will have to write hashtag before data so once you write hashtag after that you have to mention data right whatever data that you want to specify let me give you example so here for example when you write move a comma hashtag 15 hacks then what you are doing this 15 hacks data which is specified in this instruction that you are copying inside register a when you write move dptr comma hashtag 1000 hacks then what you do is here this 1000 hacks data that you are copying inside dptr and one more thing that you need to note down see with 8051 we just have this dptr register in which directly we can have 16 bits other registers are having size of 8 bits only right so here when you specify data like this hashtag then 15 hacks or you can say here we have 2 bytes data that is having same format hashtag then 2 byte data and then hacks so this is how we can represent this immediate data in instruction that's why it is referred as immediate addressing mode now i'll explain you register addressing mode so from name itself you can understand see here you will be specifying data by registers right in instruction you will be specifying data by register only here you will be using this registers only like a and r0 to r7 so this registers that we will be using here my dear students for example when you write move a comma r2 then what you are doing you are copying r2 inside a when you write move r2 comma a then what you are doing you are copying the content of a into r2 so that is how we specify data inside register and then you are performing operations based on registers only right like when you write move r1 comma r2 then you will be thinking like you will be copying r2 inside r1 right but my dear students this is not allowed with 8051 why the reason is you will have to use accumulator in terms of register addressing mode you cannot use r0 to r7 register with each other right so that is how things are there with 8051 this is not allowed that's why specifically i have mentioned this instruction many of the time students are asking me like sir i am having error and they are writing it like this and if you write instructions like this definitely you will be finding errors right so you are not allowed to do this now my dear students when you talk about direct addressing mode then in that addressing mode address of operand will be given in instruction so here you will be giving address of operand remember this here you are using internal ram or sfr address right internal ram address is there from 00 hex to 7 half x and sfr address that is there from 80 hex to ff hex so that is what we are using it with direct addressing mode let me give you some example like when you write move a comma 35 hex then what you are doing here you see you have not written hashtag see here when you write hashtag then that is immediate data but when you don't write hashtag means this is address and this is what ram address right 
Now RAM address is there in between 0 to 7F. That's why I'm saying it is RAM address. SFR address that is there from 80 hex to FFX. So when you write A comma 35 means here, my dear students, this 35 is address and at this address, whatever data is there inside RAM, that is internal RAM, right? That will be copied inside accumulator A. That is how it is happening. When you execute move A comma 80 hex, what you are doing? You are copying the content of 80 hex address. 80 hex, that is what? Allocated with port 0, right? So here, my dear students, when you write A comma 80 means 80 hex is address. And for that, whatever content is there, that you will be copying it inside accumulator A, right? For example, when you write move 30 hex comma 35 hex, then what you are doing? See, 35 hex, that is also address over here and 30 hex, that is also address. And both address are having some data, right? So now what will happen after this instruction? 35 hex address is having whatever data that you will be copying it inside 30 hex address. That is how this instruction is happening, right? Now, my dear students, I'll explain you indirect addressing mode. So in indirect addressing mode, address of operand will be given by resistor. So here with internal RAM, we have resistors as well as SFRs are also resistors. So address of operand will be given by resistor. Now you will be not using direct addressing, right? Like we have written direct address over here. If you can remember direct address of different SFR, that is good. But if you cannot remember direct address, then you can use resistors, right? So here internal RAM, external RAM can be accessed by this mode. And here, for example, when you write this indirect addressing mode with the use of at the rate, at that time, my dear students, you will be using internal RAM. Remember this. And here, when you write move A comma at the rate R1, then what you are doing? This R1 is having whatever data, now that is address. And at that address, whatever data is there with internal RAM, that you will be copying it inside A. So obviously, R1 can be there with the value in between 0 to 7F. Remember this, right? Internal RAM is there from the range of 00 hex to 7F hex. So R1 can be pointing any data inside that internal RAM and that data will be copied inside A. Here when you write move at the rate R2 comma A, then what you are doing is you are moving content of A at the memory location pointed by resistor R2, right? And obviously, as I have told you, now R2 that is pointing what? Internal RAM, right? So R2 must be there in between 0, 0 to 7F hex. Then only you can use this at the rate. Now, my dear students, for external RAM, you will be having 16 bits of addressing by DBTR. And for that, you'll have to use X. You see here normal move was there, but now you'll be using move X. So in that situation, what you are doing is you are using external RAM. And how to use that? By using DBTR, data pointer resistor that is pointing external RAM only, right? So you can directly use it by using data pointer. How you see? When you write move x a comma at the rate DBTR, then DBTR is a pointer which is pointing external RAM. At that location, whatever data is there, that you will be copying inside accumulator A. When you write move x at the rate DBTR comma A, then what you are doing? You are copying the content of A at the memory location pointed by DBTR, right? So external RAM that we can access by using DBTR, but along with that, you will have to use X in move instruction. Now, my dear students, I'll explain you external RAM with 8 bits of addressing. So 8 bits of addressing is possible using external RAM. In that, you can use any resistor like R0 to R7. But here, there are a few basic things that you need to note down. See, external RAM that is having address of 16 bits, here 8 bits that we are using by resistor. So external RAM is been accessed. That's why move X that you'll have to write first. Then when you write A comma at the rate R1, then 
external RAM address that is been pointed by R1. But how you see, if value of R1 is 25 hex, then initial two digits of this hex that should be zero, means 0025 hex that will be my address that was pointed by R1 in terms of 16 bits. And at that location, whatever content is there, that you will be copying inside accumulator, right? So here, my dear students, you can use 8 bits, but by default, assembler will convert that address in terms of 16 bits by adding 8 zeros over here in terms of binary. For example, when you write move x at the rate r0, comma a, then you will be copying the content of a at the memory location pointed by r0 in external RAM. Remember this, as you are writing x over here, it will be external RAM only. But in external RAM, see this R0 content 35 hex, if it is like this, then initial two hex digits that will be 0 as per this external RAM operation. For external RAM, you will have to write x over here. Remember this, normally we use DBTR resistor only, but as if you use other resistor, then it will be padding zeros like this. That is how things are happening. Now I'll explain you index addressing mode. Here, this mode is been used to access data from code memory. You should know my dear students, 8051, that is based on Howard architecture. So in Howard architecture, we have separate memory for data and code. Code is there with ROM and data is there with RAM, right? But in some situation, you may need to store those data which are not volatile. For example, if I say ASCII data, then ASCII data should not be volatile data. So that should be stored inside ROM. For example, seven segment display that you are interfacing. So that is also non-volatile data that also you need to store inside ROM. So those data which are not volatile that you must store inside ROM as RAM is volatile memory. So when you restart system, that data of RAM will get vanished, right? So that you must need to store inside ROM only. And for that, you will have to use index addressing mode in instructions. So here, when you write C, at that time, you will be using index addressing mode. Let me explain you that. So you see here, move and then C that I am writing, right? So move C means what? You are using code memory, right? And how you see A comma at the rate A plus DBTR. What it means? A plus DBTR, now that is my address. And at that address, whatever content is there that you are copying it inside accumulator A. For example, when you write move C A comma at the rate A plus PC. So what you are doing? You are having address which is A plus PC. And at that location, whatever content is there inside ROM, remember this, it is there inside ROM. So inside ROM, whatever content is there that you are copying it inside accumulator A. So when you write C, at that time you will be using code memory, means it will be internal or external ROM. And when you write X, at that time you will be using external RAM. And when you don't write anything, at that time you will be using internal RAM, which is having size of 0027F hex. That is how all the addressing modes are there. So I think now it is clear to you how addressing modes are there. Still, if any confusion is there, just post that in comment box. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.